Up. Hi, I'm Fox. 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 Guy. Are you watching the Two Smart Guys show where we're gonna BS about technology this evening? <laughs> Let's just be honest, I'll be up front. <gasps> Stuff broke on my isolation, so now I gotta go back and read a whole bunch of things to make sure I'm doing it right. We're, we're, we are working hard on a new free NAS series of videos. But I didn't read enough to actually you know, know how to fix it when I broke it. There's a, pop, there, there's a popular demand. And then I was thinking, well, we could just talk about RAID technology, because there's a whole bunch of different Which, RAID technologies that people would like to know about. And then we confuse but, ourselves. But we're one of them, so but we're not the experts. Yeah. <laughs> I think the biggest confusion there is when you start using the ZFS file system, how RAID integrates with that. Yeah. Right, because ZFS that's, itself... That's when it gets messy. That's when it starts going... <laughs> ZFS is like a virtual RAID-ish type thing. But that can also work. work in a RAID. I mean, it works uh, on a RAID. It's technically a file system. It's yeah. a yeah. file system. It's an expandable file system. Yes. Right. It's a file system built in mind for data integrity, for expansion, and I don't think it... And maybe redundancy. I wouldn't say that's... Well, and, and have you read... I don't know how much you've read about ZFS, because I've been poking around a lot about it lately. But have you read like what the spec is for the the, the size of ZFS? How big it can get? It's a 128-bit file system, so yeah, it's 16 it. EB. What's that? It's exabytes. Exabytes. <laughs> it's they designed it so that they could they didn't want it to ever be reached, and they realized that someday it will be reached, but they didn't want it to ever be reached. And what is meant. what is this this maximum number of files? Two and then like a, a little 48. What does that That's mean? That's two to the 48th. Two to the forty-eight. That's a lot of zeros. <laughs> <laughs> That's forty-eight zeros behind two. I think their biggest limitation is going to be the file name length of uh, two hundred fifty-five bytes. <laughs> the file name length. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a problem. <laughs> the, yeah. yeah, the volume size. It's. Yeah, when it was written in exabytes, I kind of was like, okay, so this is going to be a little long term. So nice. It's also kind of geared towards data centers Absolutely. Um, that are very large clusters of hard, you know, data. Towers storage. and racks. Yeah. Well, it's so that you could add a rack and not have to rewrite the entire a system. You don't have you just add the rack and join it to the array. Yeah. It, apparently it was going to be part of Mac, Mac OS uh, X Snow Leopard. And it was even touted as a feature, and they never implemented it. Imagine that. And uh, the people eventually spun it off as kind of like an open source thing. Hmm. I don't think ZFS for a single drive is really, you can't, it's not applicable. So. No, I think it was more for the server edition of, of That they got Mac. rid of. <laughs> yeah. They still have it. It's 50 yeah. bucks, not 30. Yeah, they got rid of it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a very interesting system. The problem is that I ran into is the glorified, I wasn't using all the same drive size, so I got nailed by the drive size loophole. Yeah, it's so, not just a regular JBOD like a Drobo is or like well, a... I set it up as, a, well, that, that's the thing, is like it shows up my card or my, the previous you know episode we talked about must set up and the box I have shows up as JBOD. And then I say, okay, I want this, this, and this to show up in the in the RAID set. So I probably could say drive one, two, and three, which are two terabytes, be in this RAID set, but how much am I, mm -hmm. you know, then I have two spare drives just running around, but that's fine. I guess I could do that. Well, I noticed in FreeNAS there was an option to uh, create a disk for either log, cache, or spare. So the cache drive may not need to be the same size as the other ones. Yeah. I, I wonder whether or not I can turn that into a swap drive too. Part swap, part spare. Why would you want to? Um, because have you read the have you read the RAM uh, implications? How yeah. they want one gigabyte of RAM per terabyte of ZFS storage. Yeah. The only way to solve that is by putting a swap in, because there's no way I'm going to be able to put in. <laughs> that many. I was pricing out the RAM for, for um, DDR2, and it's expensive. 8 yeah. gigs is like 100 bucks. Yeah. And yeah. this the thing is, the, the box I bought can hold 15 terabytes. It's just that's not even possible. 
to put it like, but I could put a 60 gig drive inside the case and have it as a swap and be just fine. Hmm. By the way, the more I look at that stupid case, sitting there knowing that the only thing that's a talking to it is the processor, the RAM, and that USB stick, the more I think small is better. <laughs> I'm going to make it work. As soon as I get the functionality of this, I'm going to learn how to do it, and I'm going to make it work. Just yeah. to say so I So you have options then. Like, if you don't want to go with a full ZFS, which is eating up, like, half of your hard drive space, you can go with, like, just a RAID 0 if you're looking for sheer speed. But I don't have the option for RAID 0. You do, but you have to have... You, you, you do, I have to have all the same drives. But you only get the... Um, lowest drive. So all your drives would be 1.5 Well, 1. 5 right now, I terabytes. could actually... But the RAID 0 gives me no backup. Nope. So that's None. at that rate, I might as well run a ZFS that's, file. That's uh, considered striping. Well, at this rate, fast? I might as well run a ZFS <laughs> file system with striping and be just fine. Because I, I get 7.5 gigabytes. Or if you want to do RAID Terminates. 1, Terminates. you get exactly half, but it's still only That's what I'm running mirrored. That's what I end up with RAID Z right now. Except, how does RAID 1 work, Raggable, if you've got a bunch of drives instead of just two? It doesn't. You have to have it all the same size of drive. So I'd have to do the yeah, same thing I was going to do. Yeah, you could, you could mirror two different size drives, like a 500 and a 750, but it'd be mirrored down to the 500. Wow, I've never that, even heard of RAID 2, but apparently all the disks have to spin synchronized in rotation? That's a SCSI RAID, I think. Wow. <laughs> Where did you see that? I, I'm looking at the wiki right now for all the different RAID types. I haven't heard of RAID 2. <laughs> I think RAID that's, 2 was... That's probably why. <laughs> I think RAID 2 was a SCSI thing that was like a live backup that like was running all the time. Like everything was running. Uh, well, that's how RAID uh, 1 is, but you don't, uh, you know, but the control work controls it. I mean, it does, you don't have to have identical drives. It's recommended, but it's not. But it looks like with a RAID 2, you would. Weird. I've never. Oh. Same with RAID three. It says the spin, the disk spin, uh, spindle rotation is synchronized, and the data is striped sequentially. Uh, wow. The difference between RAID two and RAID three is that RAID two is bit level striping. RAID three is byte level striping. Wow. Crazy. And I, I never even heard of RAID four either. I usually just wow. hear like about zero, one, five. Well, okay. So two bit level, three byte level, four is block level. Striping. So, uh, dink, dink, dedicated dink. parody. Huh. And then RAID 4 is identical to RAID 5, but it confines all parity to a single disk instead of spreading it out. So right, it so it's like, a, that so it's like a hot spare, right, or something? No, no, no. It no. Just, it's, it's, it's the zero drive or the, you know, instead of being the, you know, instead of being one, two, three, four, it's zero is where all the parity goes and one, two, three. They, you know, oh, okay, gotcha. Data. So if you lose your parity drive... You're screwed. Uh, well, no, you're no. not screwed. You'll be fine. You can lose the parity drive, but if, then if you lose another drive, then you gotcha. are screwed. Okay, so it's yeah. a two-drive thing. It just wouldn't be, very, it'd be, it wouldn't be very fast, the whole... It's not designed for video, that's for sure. Yeah. So uh, that's where RAID, RAID 5 is... That's why RAID 5 is more popular. RAID 5 is really popular for the speed. Because it spreads the parity amongst all the... Drives RAID 5 is not that fast, in my opinion. Every test that I ran against RAID 5, it was very slow for writes. Um, reading from a RAID 5 is okay, but writes suck. It's very uh, hardware and processor intensive. So either you need to have a dedicated hardware card for RAID 5, or like it, it, is, it is chews it. up your whole CPU. Well, that's why I think that our racks that, like uh, for our video servers are all hardware RAID 5s. Like, and you have to have enough drives, too, because if you're trying to do it with, like, what's the minimum, three or four? Three. Three drives, it's yeah. the performance. See, is we run crap. Through 12, I think 12 drives. I think 11 of them run. Oh, I think we run 11 in a hot spare. And then RAID 6 is two drives of parity or that you can lose. Yeah, because at that point you run in. Yeah, I don't think we're running RAID 6. And then RAID 10 isn't really RAID 10, it's RAID 10, right? That's how you have yeah, our it, setup. It's a that, nested RAID. It's a nested RAID. You've got two mirrored raids striped across each other. Yeah, so you got two stripes. And so basically two mirrored drives. Yeah. Or no, 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 no. Two striped drives for speed that are, that are then mirrored. Or is it two mirrored drives that are then striped? It can work either way. Either way. Raid zero one, raid one zero. So either way, you're just trying to get speed. Yeah, either way, you're getting speed and redundancy, and two drives could fail as long as they're not 
um, in the same on, rate. on the same rate. Yeah. So is that if you buy drives that are made at the same time, their their failure the the time that they fail. Uh, are very close to yeah. each other, and then we run the same. We run the same problem with batteries that we buy. We run the same problem all kinds of things. Because we buy seven batteries mm -hmm. at one time, and then suddenly we lose five batteries in six months. We're yeah. like, what happened? If you, I mean, if you buy a whole bunch of hard drives at once, but then you use two, you know, for the first two years, and then the next two, and the next two years, and then the next two, and the next two years, well, it's spread out. What I was suggesting was okay. So fine, we start. We have to start out with all we'll say 12 drives inside the rack. And that's fine, but we need to schedule obsolescence. And I would suggest this, this includes for home oh, use. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Schedule obsolescence, and if you can lose up to two drives at a time, you need to replace two drives a year, just to say. Like every six just months, say, just well, two drives. Uh, even if it's like two a year, you pull out drive one and drive seven, and you say, okay. Yep. And you pull them out, and you you know, pull them out not, one at not, a time, not, not, not at the same time. Not at the same time. Not at the same time. <laughs> and you can do it once every six months if you want to. Well, technically, you could do it at the same time, but then you're really asking. Yeah, trouble. but you don't want to test that because. <laughs> but you do, you know, you do the first one and let it, you know, let it rebuild, and then do the second one, let it rebuild, and one that gives you a good workout on your first drive to make sure the drive's not going to fail out of the box, and two that gives you, you know, that safety net. And you take those two drives, and they can't be used inside of a RAID anymore. They need to be, you know, disposed of inside of someone else's computer or put in something that's not, like, non-critical use. But, anyway, it was a... And that's a that's, good idea. It's something that's not that's really a, talked that's about That's a very a lot. valid point about uh, other thing is hard drive cycle maintenance. Cooling. Hot hard drives fail. Yeah, well, hot hard drives... Any hot electronics fail faster just because it starts breaking down connections yep well with a hard drive it, it's there's a certain threshold like if you read to it if you reach a certain temperature it dies immediately yeah um, either do I because if you think about how close that head is getting to that disc yeah and just the slightest amount of thermal expansion, expansion yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you'd start thinking funny noises yeah. So it makes for it makes for good. Uh, it's just one of those things that like you don't ever read about this kind of stuff because like there's all kinds of um, literature about how to create your safety raid and how your raid is the, the savior of everything. This is the sort of stuff that gets talked about in higher level um, disk management for companies. Yeah. Like bigger companies. You know, we buy 50 drives at a time and run through our entire rack system. Can you imagine yeah. what the out, if, if this is the case, can you imagine what the output of drives just for schedule obsolescence for Google is? <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, they've got to back a, a rider truck up like once a week. <laughs> that's so, that's just kind of, they, they chew through hard drives. That just kind of gives me an icky feeling about. I wonder Store. if they, they could sell them. I wonder if they do sell them as refurbished hard drives or something. I wonder. I, they, I, have to, I, they have I to recycle them recycle. somehow. Hmm. They probably take them out for speed testing and say, okay, for this speed testing, the drive had three years on it originally, was used for a year. We'll set it out with a six month warranty and that's it. You know, it's just basic refurb. Who knows? But, you know, all that kind of stuff. So the problem is. I don't have a NAS box that's up and running right now. I've actually torn down my server. I've done all sorts of things. I'm in chaos at home. And we have no ads uh, this week. With no sponsors. Yeah. So. Oh, yay! The only thing we have to pimp for is Maybe ourselves. that's a good thing. <laughs> Maybe uh, having ads is a bad thing. Maybe uh, not. Uh, uh, but... Join us next week when maybe we'll have a free NAS box going. Or... I got I to gotta do some serious <laughs> reading and moving because it, it looks like if I have to, I'll take the three two terabyte drives and make them the Z RAID and then figure something out to do the other one. And I got to rebuild my array at work. One of the drives failed. Did you find out which one it was? Yeah. 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 And I mean, and there are like 750s, 750? Yeah. Yeah. And I want to just replace them all with bigger drives eventually, but I... You'd have, uh, to, re you'd have to rebuild the array. Yeah, that RAID sucks. <laughs> What's wrong with the array? Well, is there a controller like in Windows where I can, you know, when one drive fails, I can put in a new one without having to like shut down the machine and let it rebuild for like seven hours? Um, well, what you can do is that if you're going <laughs> to migrate... Well, 
if you're going to migrate off of ESXi and put up a Windows host, it should have a utility that does that should allow that. Hmm. I think you could you can do that with software that interfaces with the card instead of having to do it through the BIOS. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder if I can do it on one of the virtual machines, if I can install the software to manage it. No? Why not? Uh, I don't think you can... Be, uh, you might be able to... I've never tried to pass a PCI device. Anyways, these are the fun things that people run into when dealing with RAID. So make sure you, you study before you set one up because they're pretty pretty hard to change after the fact. <laughs> That's why I like, as soon as I looked and saw, I was like, this isn't what I wanted, I stopped. I'm like, it's, I'm not continuing with anything else until I figure out what's going on. Anyways, subscribe so. to the feed. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. This has been the Two Smart Guys with the